Hey everybody, this is Paige from the Customer Success Team. I'm going to walk you through an app defense deployment. First, you're going to sign into your org and navigate to the gear button. Click the downloads page and make sure you're on the appliances tab. As soon as the OVA download is complete, you can log into your vCenter and then deploy the OVF template. Make sure you're logged into the vCenter that you wish to link to app defense. Then you'll navigate to wherever you place that download, rename your appliance, and go through the deployment steps. Here's where you'll set the root and admin credentials for your appliance. A few things to note about this is the root credentials cannot be recovered, so make sure that you remember this password or have it stored somewhere. And the admin credentials can only be reset by using the root login. Both of these passwords also need to meet the complexity requirements, that being they must be at least eight characters in length, have an uppercase, a lowercase, and a special character. All right, next we're gonna get into the network settings. If you are not using DHCP, you'll need to have a gateway, domain name, domain search path, the domain name server, the IP address of the appliance, and then also the net mask. So following the setup of your network credentials, you'll just want to validate those and then begin deploying your appliance VM. As soon as the appliance VM is totally deployed, you can turn it on and then go ahead and open a new tab in your browser and navigate to the appliance IP with, keep in mind, you need HTTPS to navigate over. You will then use your admin credentials that you just set in the appliance to log in. As soon as you've logged in, you'll be able to navigate to the configuration tab. If you are using the SAS version, you're going to want to click edit and then in the drop down switch to the SAS version, which is what we are deploying today. And now we're going to need a UUID and API key. So we'll have to go back over to the App Defense Manager, navigate to Appliances, and click Provision New Appliance. You will then name your appliance, and I'm just going to name it the same thing that I did in vCenter. As soon as you hit the Provision button, you will see the UUID and API keys. I recommend that you copy this to a notepad just for safekeeping until the full deployment is successful. You'll then back, go back over to your appliance manager and copy those keys in. As soon as that's done, you can go ahead and press save, and then we'll go to edit the next box. This is where you'll put in your vCenter host name. And as soon as you put that host name in and you click register, it will ask you for credentials. These credentials need to have SSO administrative privileges, otherwise this step will fail. As soon as your credentials have registered, you should be able to see your vCenter server details now. You can then click the register button on this. And if you are using NSX, it will auto discover the NSX manager. You just need to log in with your admin credentials. As soon as that's done, you can then return to the dashboard view and you should see a green status, meaning the appliance is active. We can then go back over to the App Defense Manager and wait for the appliance to turn active there. As soon as you see that turn active, go ahead and go to the gear button and navigate to inventory. You can then select the host that you want to deploy App Defense to. You can select multiple and this does not require any reboot on the host side. As soon as the hosts that you've chosen to deploy App Defense to turn active, you can then start to deploy the VMs. First, you want to choose the VMs that you want to deploy to and enable guest integrity. This will cause a reboot. Next, I'm going to show you how to deploy the App Defense module using VM tools. The minimum version of VM tools you'll need to do this is 10.3.2. This is our recommended version. 
Okay, so as soon as you've navigated to the VM in which you want to deploy the app defense module, run through the setup, but click custom config as opposed to a typical or full. In this custom version, you'll be able to select the app defense module to enable and install. As soon as that's fully deployed and the VM has restarted, you can then navigate back to the app defense manager and then wait for that VM to turn active. This is what you'll do with the rest of the hosts and VMs that you plan to deploy to AppDefense. That's it for the deployment and we'll do scopes and services next.